Hi, I'm Jeff with Danfoss Drives. Today I'm going to do a video for you that will display the basic functionality of our Danfoss MCT10 software. So I'll show you where to go to download the software and how to install it. Once it's installed, I'll show you how to make a connection to a live drive, then how to read, write, and monitor parameters of a connected drive, and finally I'll show you how to save drives to a project file for later access. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Okay, so I want to show you first of all where you go to download the software. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser here. I'm currently using Chrome. I go to the danfossdrives.com website. And here I'll click the service and support link, followed by downloads. I want to select the proper business unit on the left side, which is drives. And now we see the My Drive Suite. This is where you would go to find all the available Danfoss software downloads. Going to go ahead and open that up. And here we see the software tool MCT10. If you click the upper portion of this box like I'm going to do, it's going to give you some instructions on how to install it after the download is complete. There will be two boxes. One will be where you're asked to enter the CD key code, which is shown right here, 12314500. And another box asking for a license key. You do not need the license key if you click the box, that sa the box that says install basic version with limited functionality. The limited version does have some limitations that I can try to point out in the video, although most users find it totally suitable. If you want to acquire a license key, you can talk to your da Danfoss regional rep. So. I'm not going to install the software because it's a somewhat timely process. It's a large download, so we'll proceed uh, assuming I have downloaded and installed the software according to these instructions here. After the installation is complete, you'll have to go to your Start menu for the first time. It does not create a desktop icon automatically. So you'll find your Danfoss Drives folder, and now I'll have the MCT10 software in there. To go ahead and open that up. Here we see the first screen or the opening screen of MCT10. We have two sides here. We have the network side and the project side. Anything that appears on the network tree, there's a live connection between the computer running the MCT10 and a VFD. On the project side, the, the drives that would be on, on the project side are offline. That's where you can save project files to in the project side where I can access them later. So I'm going to start out here by displaying the live connection via the network. So I'm going to go ahead and make a USB connection. I'm using a USB printer type cable. I believe it's called an A to D cable. I have one end in the drive that plugs in underneath the control card terminal cover. And I'm going to plug it into my laptop right now. And you'll see that the software recognized that. And now under the USB, if I break that down, I'll see the connected drive here. So I'm currently connected to NFC 202, 1.1 kilowatt. 230 volt drive with software version 272 and I see that MCT10 also has the proper database for that drive. There may be occasions where you plug the drive into the laptop and it appears on the USB side however instead of the drive being identified you see a circle a red circle with a uh, cross through it here and that means that the drive or I'm sorry the software sees a connected drive but it does not have the database for it. When that happens you'll see a button down here that'll say download drive database. Clicking that button 
will allow the software to upload that database uh, so it then will understand that drive. After that process is done, everything will look normal like this. So again, if you see the red circle with the X through it, look for the download drive database button here. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up or expand this tree and now we should recognize this as the drive menu groups. We have our quick menus all parameters would relate to the main menu. If I click all parameters here, it's going to show me all parameters in the entire drive, and this is going to be a big long list. Or I can break it down to parameter groups. So I'm going to tree this out, and now you should recognize this more like the main menu groups in the drive. If I want to make a change to motor data, for example, I can click group 1, and all parameters in group 1 are shown. or like I like to do, I can break it down further. I'm going to show you here because I can't read everything. I'm going to expand this. So now I'm going to go to group 1-2 motor data and here's where I'll see only the parameters associated with my motor data or group 1-2. Any parameters that I change here will be reflected in the drive. These are live changes. So when I'm on the network side, any changes that I make are live. Also, for example, if I go down to group 16, data readouts, is an area where you can read back data from the drive. It's a read-only group. Um, I'll select inputs and outputs here. And just to display this, and we can see again that there's a live connection, the connected drive, I also have a I.O. simulator box connected to, so I can manipulate values. So I'm going to change the voltage on analog 53, and we should see that being reflected here. Again, so we do have a live connection to this drive. When I read and write, it's done on the fly. So you can use the MCT-10 software as an alternative to programming the uh, drive to the keypad. What we have here underneath all parameters, I would consider uh, help screens or wizards. Um, live access to the alarm log here by clicking that. This allows you to set the time and date uh, from your PC and also set up time-based actions. We have a preventive maintenance wizard um, as well as some other things. Drive control here we'll talk about in another uh, video that we uh, uh, includes more advanced functions on MCT-10. It, it allows you to control the drive remotely from your computer for testing and setup. So we'll get into that in a future video. So I'm going to move on to the project side here. The project side is where you need to pull a drive into to allow you to save it. So the easiest way to do that, for example, you're in a factory and you want to back up the drives in that factory to a project. You approach the drive of interest, plug into the USB, and it will appear on the USB side like shown here, and I will drag and drop that drive into the project. This will take a few seconds here, and when it finishes up, we'll see that this drive has been copied from the live network side over to the static offline project side. Okay, that's complete here. It says the read was successful, so I can close this window. And now if I tree out the project side, I have an exact duplicate of the network drive on it. Like I mentioned earlier, you can save drives on the project side, so I'm going to go ahead and make a simple change here to digital input terminal 19 on the project side. I'm going to change this to the value no operation. I can scroll up and down here. I'm sorry, I'm going to change this to the value reversing. Uh, I can scroll up and down and find that and use my mouse here or I can also use hotkeys. So I'm going to hit the R key on my keyboard and you'll see it'll jump right to all the words starting with the letter R and then I can use the enter key. 
So I've made that change to the drive on the project side. However, it's not live. So again, this is static. So in order to get that change to be made to the drive on the, the network side, I would have to write this project information to the live drive. I'll display that later. For now, I'm just going to show you that we can save the project at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a unique name and save it at the desktop. At this point here I can close the software and now when I reopen the software and here we have the file. I'm going to go ahead and open that and MCT10 should open up just like we closed it with the same menu groups open and notice that the, the change that I had made here is reflected in the save drive. So that's a method that can be used to back up or save files. If I had multiple drives of interest in the project, I will disconnect from the live drive, approach the next drive of interest I want to back up and then plug it back in to that drive. And I would go through the same process here. I'm just going to go ahead and take the live drive and pull it down to the project side. Now I'll have two drives in the project. That is one limitation of the basic version. It will only allow you to put four drives in a project. You can save and create multiple project files, but each can only contain four drives. With the paid version or the licensed version, it will allow you to put up to 126 drives in one project. So this is going to finish up here. I'm going to close that. Now we'll notice that this is an exact copy. These drives are the same because essentially in my example I've copied the same drive to, to the project twice. However, if they were different, you can right click and give the drives unique names. So we're just going to call this VFD number one. And I will highlight and right click the other. And I'm going to rename this drive also. We'll call it VFD number two. So, multiple drives in a project. I also encourage you to right click and explore your options. There are a lot of things you can do through that. So, for example, one thing you can do is make a comparison between two different drives. So if I had two drives that were acting differently, uh, although they were supposed to be programmed the same and I wanted to find out what was different between those two drives, I could plug into drive number one, I'm currently set up, pull it down to the project side and that'll be this drive here which I've already done. Then I can go plug into the live drive, it'll appear on the USB side and you can see here if I right click on this drive I can select compare. So before I do that I want to make one change so we can see something happen here. So on this project drive, so I've already made that change actually just to show you again I've changed this digital input from the default value of no operation to reversing. That value is left default on the live drive here. it is no operation. So to display that functionality I'll right click the live drive and select compare. It's going to ask me what I want to compare it to. I want to compare it to VFD number one on the project side. And I'll select only drive setup one for comparison and we'll execute that function. Give this a few seconds here to finish up and we'll take a look what it comes up with. Okay, so the first compared drive, which was the live drive in the USB, we compared to drive number two, the project drive, VFD number one that I made the one change to which was changing terminal 19 to the value reversing so it came up with the one parameter that was different between the two drives. That can be a useful function when troubleshooting. Another thing we can do on the project side 
is create generic drives. Before I get into that, I'll show you if I wanted to have the change that I made in this project drive be written to the live drive, I can right click and say write to drive. I'm going to go ahead and stop that there. That would have written that one parameter change into that drive. Again, we're offline here, so unless I initiate that right, this drive is not affected. So, another thing you can do in the project side is create a generic drive. So I'm going to right click here and select new drive. I'm going to choose the type. We'll call it test drive or VFD number three. You select the series of interest. So we'll pick an FC202 aqua drive here. If there are any option cards on the drive, including serial communication option cards, general purpose I.O. option cards, or C options, which are motion control option boards, I would select them here in the menu so that the software understands and includes those parameters. Then we select the software version here. If you do not know the software version of the drive that you intend to later connect to, I suggest you choose the highest software version before we get to the double digit numbers. Ignore those, those are special versions. So again, if I know the version of the drive that I wish to connect to later, I'll select it. If you don't, just select the newest version. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay here. And now we'll see I have VFD number three. And this is a complete default setup of a FC202. Uh, this particular drive is 0.25 kilowatts, 2 to 240 volts. So there are some differences here between this and the live drive. And I'll show you what happens uh, when there are differences and I go to write this information. So normally the purpose of creating this generic project drive is so someone can program the drive at their own leisure before getting on site. So you can go through and make all the changes that you need to to this drive and essentially set up the complete setup. Of course you can save this project file when you get to the field and you open that project you would connect again to the drive of interest that you wish to write the data to and at that point I would right click and again select write to drive. Now I'm going to do this here and we're going to see what happens. This is going to give me some warnings here, first of all. It's saying that there are drive differences detected. One, the, the major versions may be different and the power sizes are different. So this is because I selected the wrong software version. I encourage you to choose the, the most current one, which is what I would do. Um, essentially, it, it may say that there are parameters in this project drive that don't exist in the actual connected drive, and therefore I can't write them. But I'm going to go ahead and say OK and just let this happen. If you are able to match the software versions, then the, uh, the software versions, the voltage and power size, you should get 100% right without any warnings or errors. If you do uh, select the wrong value for the software version, like I mentioned, then you may get some errors. And after the write's complete, you'd want to go and make sure that everything that you wanted to uh, wrote correctly, but normally it will. So I'm going to close that, and now if we go back to the live drive, all the parameters that were on this project drive has written to the live drive. If I made a comparison between this drive and this drive, you would find no differences because, again, I wrote that information to that drive. So that's a basic introduction to the MCT-10 software. Hopefully it helps you get started, and uh, we'll have more advanced videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and good luck. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, 
The email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.